All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from Blue Sky San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Margie Worrell, who is today, you're, you're actually in Breckenridge, Colorado, right? I am, John. Good to be with you. I was in San Diego yesterday, believe it or not. Ah, <laughs> so you're jumping around, taking a bit of a, taking a, a well-earned break, I hope. I am, I am. Yeah, and Margie is an international speaker and best-selling author and global authority on brave leadership. And today we're going to talk about Margie's new book, You've Got This, her latest book, You've Got This, uh, all about embracing uncertainty, bouncing back from setbacks. So uh, this book, uh, You've Got This, it's very timely for the, the world we live in today. Isn't it ever? And, and, and of course, John, when I was writing it, I had no idea how could anyone have known that 2020 would be, the world would be tipped off its axis. But uh, mm -hmm. given that I wrote the book during a period of a lot of disruption for me personally and my family, where all my well laid plans had been turned on their head, and I wrote it in that context. And of course, um, this year, the whole world is going through a collective experience of our what we wanted for our future and our plans all being turned on their head. And I think a lot of people are struggling to have 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 faith in themselves and be optimistic about their future, and to really trust that whatever happens, they've got this. Um, so I'm I'm just the timing in one way was kind of terrible for a book launch, and in the other, it was it, maybe it was just divine intervention. Yeah, well, they do say timing is everything, right? So, um, so but it's it's great that you that this book is is around right now because let's face it. Uh, in the normal way, people struggle often with uncertainty, but can often convince themselves to kind of work their way through it. I think because we're in a period of like global uncertainty and yeah. it, it's, it's that much more difficult for people. So how, how do you talk people kind of back off the ledge and start to say, okay, yes, there's a lot of huge uncertainty out there, but let's take, just take a step back and start to look at the things within your own control. Yeah, I mean, of course, the, that the serenity prayer, which is mm -hmm. is is so relevant right now. You know, may, you know, having the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, mm -hmm. the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. But let's face it: if it was easy to just say, "I'm just like letting go and surrendering to the universe, what's outside my control," and I'm totally at peace with everything, I mean, more people would be feeling far more serenity, and there'd be a lot less anxiety. And the, and the reality is, a lot of people are feeling really anxious. And I've had many moments like that myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not immune to those what ifs that come up. But but there's a few. There's a lot of things that we can do. And I think starting with really looking at where we are putting our focus, what you put your focus on expands. And if all you're doing is dwelling on what's wrong, on what's mm -hmm. missing, on all the bad things that can happen, it actually just amplifies our anxiety. And, and we, we have no, no creative space, no mental space, no emotional space to try and then figure out, well, what's something I can do right now? How can I make the best of this situation? So it really does begin with practicing, you know, that ancient, the ancient art and science of mindfulness and paying attention to what we're paying attention to. It's so easy to get pulled down that rabbit hole of what ifs. And there's a lot of research that shows that during times of uncertainty, and we are living in it right now, as you say, we're living in this collective moment of global uncertainty, it naturally triggers anxiety in us because as humans, our brains are wired to look for patterns. We want to make plans on a future that we can predict. And at times like this, we don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, 12 months from now, we don't have a chance. Six months, we yeah. don't know. Three months, you know, a month ago, I didn't know if I have four kids, are they going back to school? You know, yeah. that one of their colleges, they changed their mind overnight. No, they're not coming back. Suddenly you're scrambling for where are they going to live? And, 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 uh, and so at a time like this, it's so easy to get pulled into that anxious thinking. And that's where we have to continually come back and reground ourselves in what I call self-certainty. Mm. and um, self-certainty is a concept I wrote about too. 
Yeah, and and just to just to just to uh, just to hone in on a couple of things you said there, though, I think it's so critical now because you could spend all day looking at. COVID numbers from across the world and all the news and everything, you could spend all your days looking at the other news, you know, election news, all of that stuff coming in. You could you could be on social media with people panicking about this. I mean, you could literally fill your whole day with all of these negative inputs or, or stuff that's going to get you more anxious. So to your point, you have to start looking at what you're feeding your mind with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I actually, I have, I have four kids and uh, two of my children have had COVID and no, three of them had COVID, have had COVID this year. And my husband had it. In fact, he was in mm. hospital and then uh, he was away for 30 days in the week where my book was supposed to be coming out. Wow. And so I literally had to, if ever there was a time to walk the talk mm-hmm. in the midst of what should have been a book tour kicking off the world, everything got cancelled. He got COVID. He went off for some... I didn't get it, even though I slept beside him. I didn't get it. Um, and and I had, to, I had to kind of come back to myself. And, you know, Albert Camus, the poet, once wrote that in the midst of winter, I finally learned that within me was an invincible summer. Mm. And I think this is a time for all of us to just keep reconnecting to the invincible summer and we only get glimpses of it, glimpses of it sometimes and bam our minds are going again but to mm-hmm. really prioritizing time to become centered to ground ourselves in that what i what i mentioned before is self certainty that is yeah. there's a lot outside me outside my control and i have got this going on too like my my work has been really impacted my husband's work's been really impacted four kids and bills and all that sort of stuff, and we're we're actually located globally. We're not all in the one country, um, often. And so, what's the future hold? And so, coming back to who am I going to be during this time? It will pass. A year from now, we will not be in the midst of this pandemic. A year from now, kids will be in school. <laughs> A year from now, business will be getting back to some new semblance of normal. A year from now, people will be gathering in bigger groups without the same levels of con- you know, legitimate concern. Mm-hmm. It- so who do I choose to be right now in the midst of this difficult, turbulent, uncertain time so that one year from now... I'm going to look back on this time and feel good about how I showed up and who I was yeah. as a leader, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a parent, as a spouse, as a friend. Um, and I, that's certainly something I've been doing regularly. And I, and I like daily, I have to keep coming back to that because otherwise you could end up being stressed out. And, mm. and otherwise there's this concept called fear casting. And mm. when we're in the midst when we're in the midst of um, of times where there's a lot outside our, our control and our safety and security feels threatened, and that's the case for a lot of people, yeah. myself included, it's very easy to get pulled into what we call fear casting, where we look out into the future and our, our imaginations come up with worst case scenarios yeah. of, oh, but what, but what if I don't ever get any work yeah. back? And what if I can't pay these bills? And what if I have to move? And what if, you know, and, and on it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that actually only makes, it actually impacts our immune system in negative ways. Sure. So in terms sure. of a virus, we're, 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 our immune system is less robust, um, but it also, it's interesting, it actually narrows even our peripheral vision. So we're not as creative in how we approach our problems and challenges. And like just our, our vision is literally can only see what's in front of it versus going, you know, I could, I could try something totally different I've never done before. I could contact this person and talk about, you know, creatively co- collaborating with them. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the trouble is when you get into that mindset is you you can very quickly and easily find things to confirm your bias at that point, right? You can find things that are confirming, yes, to say I'm right, like that's happened. Oh, look, that's right. So it is all terrible. It is all going to, as opposed to, as you said earlier, 
I mean, a healthy mind, a healthy body. Uh, and and sometimes, sometimes all you have is the belief that things are going to work out. Now, you still have to do all of the right things to get there. But I'm a huge believer in, in, in believer in belief. Um, I'm a huge believer that if you sometimes you just have to have that strong belief that everything will come together, maybe in ways that you're not expecting. Uh, and yeah. maybe the solution is going to be completely different to the one you imagined. But there will be one. And I think that's and I think that idea of fear casting. Yeah, because you can go down that very quickly and you can find lots of little data points to prove yourself right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Our brains are wired for that, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to find evidence that supports mm -hmm. why we're right and why the, you know, it is Armageddon and the world really is yeah. going to end. And um, and so we have to actually look for evidence to to for the opposite. It's like you yeah. know what it is going to work out. You have done hard things before. You have got through hard times before. Uh, sometimes some of your biggest disappointments before ended up being things you look back on and go, oh, thank gosh, I didn't get that job or I didn't end up in that mm -hmm. relationship or I, you know. So, but often we don't look, we don't naturally go there. We're wired with neg for the negativity bias. Um, and I often have to go back and go, you know, sometimes, the, you know, the worst stroke of luck that I had has turned out to be a great stroke mm -hmm. of luck. And that's where, you know, faith, this concept of faith um, is very important too. And some people have strong religious beliefs. Some people don't. But faith isn't just about, it isn't, isn't just about religion. It is about sure. believing that even in the midst of the mess, good things can come from that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that... There is a force at work in the middle of this that's bigger than I can see and that maybe there's a higher order at play that I, I don't understand. But when we're operating from that, like from that, that, that I call it faith, operating from fa faith and not fear, it actually expands our bandwidth to cope with difficulty. And, you know, the concept behind You've Got This, my book, is really based in, I mean, the, the subtitles, The Life-Changing Power of Trusting Yourself. But it's trusting in yourself and in, and in some bigger force that no matter what happens here, I've got this, I'll come out the other side of this, good things can be made from this, and I'm in, and being really intentional in looking for those things and and making sure that you you seize the opportunities too. Yeah, and I think that I think that's so important that idea of faith and belief and and whatever form that that, that takes for you. Uh, and part of it then is, and I and I think this is something also you deal with in the book is, is then you have to start. It's one thing to look at okay, what are the inputs that I put into my brain and into my body. What are the people that I surround myself with? And again, I mean, if we just take the pandemic right now as a as a, an example, I mean, we could find a load of people to surround ourselves who are going to reinforce how terrible everything it is and the fear and all of this. Or we could choose other people maybe who have a more optimistic or, who, as you say, are are out there finding positive things to do during this Um but the people around you at a time like this I mean, and in general are, are so critically important that I don't think people pay enough attention to it. Absolutely. I mean, the conversations we have with other people impact how we feel um, in positive ways and negative ways. And every interaction we have with another human being involves an exchange of energy. And even, even online and the social media and the, or, the, the, the orbit, the, the, the digital orbit that we're flying around in impacts our way of seeing the world. And I, I've met people, I know people who are just paralyzed in fear, terrified of going out. As I, as I said, I got on a plane yesterday mm -hmm. and flew halfway across the country. And actually next week I'm flying back to Asia where I'm currently living. I came out right. here a month ago. Um, people are like, I can't believe you're flying internationally. I'm like, I've got kids here. I'm flying internationally. It was fine, but some people wouldn't dare to do it. And it was totally fine. I've had a great time. I'm so glad I've been traveling um, because mm -hmm. I do not want fear to sit in the driver's seat of my life. And yeah. so often we do let fear sit in the driver's seat 
and it keeps us from taking actions that would allow us to move forward. And in this case, for me, connect with my family and, and spend time in the mountains. And um, but, but for everybody that's, that's listening right now, I would just ask you to just reflect on if you are operating from a belief that you've got this, you will figure this out, it won't last forever, um, what actions would you take today that maybe you haven't been taking because you've sort of been a bit crippled. Um, and, you know, those people who come out the other side of adversity better, there's a concept called post-traumatic growth. People who come out, we're, we're all going through a bit of trauma right now. Sure. And it's not denying it. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying I have a great, every day has been filled with joy. It's not. I've had uncertainty. But we need to own those negative emotions because they're important for us to flourish but not be consumed by them. And then to operate from that belief system that good will come from this and I'm going to be as a really powerful catalyst for that good. So what can I be doing? How can I look back on this time and go, man, I wrote a book or I redesigned it, I designed a new product or I set up collaboration with people that I would never have had time for yeah. previously. There's a lot of things that we can look for. We just got to be intentional. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, the amount of people you're able to connect with and have deeper conversations with. And I actually, uh, myself, I had to go, there was a, a family issue. I, I traveled back at the end of May, beginning of June. I traveled internationally. I had to go to, to back to Ireland. And, um, and it was at the very kind of the start of the height of all of this. And it was a crazy experience. But at the same time, I was just like, yeah, whatever. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. And I was saying, well, I'll never, probably never see LAX like this again, where it's completely deserted and all of that. Um, and I think that's what you got to do is you got to look for, take, it as ex take all of this as experiences. Uh, at the start of this, it's something kind of I, I unfortunately has waned now, but at the start of this, there were so many people from the neighborhoods out walking and smiling and waving to each other, people who never did that kind of thing. There was a community feel. I mean, unfortunately, it's gone, kind of gone away now, but but there are so many ways you can you can look for the opposite to the doom and gloom. You can look at the, the bright things that are happening and say, actually, if some of these endure after this, the world actually be a better place. Yeah, and to your point, start on the people you hang out with, being intentional about that um, yeah. and setting boundaries. Uh, I think, you know, we can't love ourselves and really respect ourselves if we're not sometimes putting in, in boundaries of the people that we're going to invest time and energy with. And I did, I had my own podcast, I Live Brave podcast, and I did one recently on take 100% responsibility for the energy you let out but also take 110% responsibility for the energy you let in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what you read and that's what you watch and that's what you're scrolling through. You know, if you're three hours a day scrolling through whatever, so Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. how is that lifting yeah. and serving you? And often it's doing the opposite. Oh, um, completely, the, completely the opposite. And I do think there's always a question. Whenever you hear somebody say, oh, this friend or I have, and oh, they always make me feel bad or she oh, always puts me down or whatever. Sometimes you could ask the question, you'd say, okay, what purpose are they serving you? Because they are serving some kind of purpose for you right now. It's a choice you're making to have that person in there because so rather than just look at that other person and say they're whatever, you have to ask yourself, why do you feel the need to be around that person? Yeah. It's on you. It's on you. It's not on them. It's and often, on you. And often that's and often that comes down to our fear of disrupting relationships, mm -hmm. hurting feelings. Um, having to deal with their emotions if then they feel rejected by us. And, and I know as, as and I like taking care of people. I like people mm -hmm. feeling cared for by me. Um, and so sometimes setting those boundaries can be, a, you know, something that's you've got to do very, very carefully. For me, it's about filling my calendar with so many things that lift me and elevate me and inspire me and embolden me and people that my calendar's full, a little bit too full for those things that don't and um and I think being really intentional about how you how you spend that time and I'd love to catch up but I just right now I'm, I'm really yeah. you know full up with what else I have going on but also sometimes there's relationships that we choose to be in yep but there may be conversations we don't want to have like I don't want to get stuck talking about it could be politics right now, or they may have very different political views. And let's face it, there it's a it's a very polarized country <laughs> we're in. Um, and 
And I, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and they believe in uh, their conspiracy, you know, the QAnon stuff. And I, I just said, you know, I, I just, I'm just, I just don't want to talk about that. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't want to put any energy into it. It's just, I've done the research. I need to research, know for what I, my beliefs, and I, I don't want to engage in any more conversation. And I think they were probably pretty disappointed that that's just a boundary I'm going to set. You know, I don't want to go yeah. there. So, yeah, I think, and I think we all have to do that throughout our lives, not just now, but it's, it's good practice for other times too. Yeah, no, it, it is. It absolutely is. And I think that's it. I, I think that, uh, you know, you own, um, we own the, uh, own the people around us and the choices that we make to have them around us. And if we're avoiding a difficult conversation, then that's on us. If we continue to have that person around and they're bringing us down, that's on us. And I think it's that ownership thing. And I think that's at the end of the day, the thing that will carry the people through who will succeed and will come out of this and the people who take ownership for their circumstance. They say, okay, I didn't start the pandemic. I didn't like collapse the whole world, but I own my reaction. Mm. Exactly, exactly. And look, I, I learned growing up on a small dairy farm in rural Australia that growth and comfort can't ride the same horse. Right. And we, never, we don't grow in those times when life is easy and everything goes our way. Um, mm -hmm. It might be nice. I could Believe me, I could do it a little bit going my way right now too. But <laughs> we don't grow those times. We grow through the struggles and we grow through the challenges. And, and yeah, but not everyone grows. Some people just shrink back and get, you know, bitter and twisted. So mm -hmm. how do we respond to it and how, you know, can I, I'm like just so committed to I want to come through the other side of this and in some way going, you know what, I'm grateful. I didn't enjoy it, but I'm grateful for how I grew and what I learned yeah. and what I even discovered in myself and and maybe how it forced me to be a bit, to approach things differently, to approach my work differently. Um, and, I, you know, I've got better at using Zoom and virtual, you know, doing virtual webinars and technology. I, I wouldn't have probably bothered. You know? yeah. I mean, it's kind of like either you, either you adapt or die, right? So it's like, okay, this is a time to adapt. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Listen, this has been fantastic. Uh, Margie Worrell, the latest book, You've Got This. Uh, all of Margie's information will be below this video, all the links. But before we go, Margie, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, so I, I usually do a lot of flying, actually. I speak at a lot of conferences. I love that. I work in in the, in, the, in, in the whole space of empowering people as professionals and how they lead and how they live. Um, and I've written five books. You've got this is my fifth. I have my Live Brave podcast and anyone, you can find all the resources online at my, at my website, margiewarrell.com. That's fantastic. All right, listen, my name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.